Yo, yo, yo. Whoa, all the things. All the things. What is this? What is this one? What's what's happening? Nothing's working. Hang on. You guys in? What's good? What's up, Tequila? Ponky? Delaro? Roto? 3D Licks? Freezy Demon? Hello? Alright. What is, what is going on? What is. All the things are wrong. Everything's wrong. <laughs> We're gonna be looking at substance all night. This music I might change though. It's not I'm not in the mood. Hey, what's up, Emil? Emil Rakovsta? Did I say that right? I have no idea. I'm horrible at names, so. Boom. But welcome. Oh man, got a follow too. And all the hosts, you guys are awesome. Alright, is this all? Everything looks like it's working. That's not how you say it. Of course. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I wonder. Okay, this is gonna. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna try this. Um, video capture. No, window, window capture, display capture, music. Oh, oh god. No. I wonder if I can put this here and then lower the uh, opacity. So it's just ghosting in the background. We'll see if that's if that gets too distracting. Of course not. Uh, so how are you guys doing? What's good? What's happening? It is there now. Sick. I'm down. Probably still put it behind the chat though. Cool. Acoustic wall padding? I don't know. I need something on the wall behind me. Uh, it'll help with the echoing and stuff too. You guys, you guys got me a new hard drive, which uh, I'll probably be ordering in the next day or two. So thank you, thank you very much. All right, where are we at here? Oh yeah, the the substance or the the article is out. So stoked. So stoked. 
Okay, so what we're doing today is we're going to actually look at uh, ways to, I mean, I'm still learning designer, of course, but uh, we'll be looking at ways to uh, generate a decent roughness map, what, what a roughness map means, uh, looking at albedo, how we can how we can build a better albedo. This is where I'm at currently on my learning endeavors. Uh, this is probably one of the better ones I've made so far. So it's kind of cool. I feel cool. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'll I'll give a little bit of a breakdown here. I'm doing this probably not in the most efficient way either. Um, let's split some stuff up. So we've got, I'm using these locators. They're, what are they, I think they're just called pins, yeah. I'm using these pins to help me uh, locate specific uh, details. if I need that. Anywho, so with those locators, those pins, you can uh, snap by pressing F2. It'll just hop hop around. So when your, when your scene gets freaking crazy. Oh, nice. Thanks, dude. Um, yeah, so by pressing F2, you can hop around these 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 guys um, and I've made like a generator for pebbles it isn't necessarily like it doesn't have all the features that I want from generator but it's it's getting there so we have uh, up here I've got the generator testing ground which is where I'm testing out all the generator stuff that I've, I'm building um, so if you go to the pebble generator you can like as you make as you make, uh, let's see if you go up here and you go new and you make a new graph, uh, it'll show up in this like, this is like your, it's almost like your project file, I'm gonna call it that. Uh, then you can drag these into your scene. Uh, so you can, you can reference graphs into graphs. What's up game art? How you doing? Oh yeah, and speaking about the acoustic wall padding stuff, it's pretty cheap, pretty cheap material. It's either that or egg carton container things. Um, the amount that I want to get is like 32 squares times, it'd be 64 squares about this big. And they would just go all over the wall be crazy. I think I have an idea too for what I want to do with uh, the wall behind me. Maybe something like a, um, what do you, what do you call it? Like Polaroids. So whenever I go, like maybe I'll start going to things like PAX or, or GDC or things like that. And if I meet people, I'll have the, I'll have it with me and I can take a picture. And then as I meet people that I actually hang out with in the discord or in chat, I'll just put them on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take me forever, but maybe I can get that wall covered. That'd be super cool. Anywho, back to the substance. So I've got this generator and you can see it's got an output, which uh, is like a height. And if you bring in like a height to, oh man, I'm going to need to move this keyboard and this mic a little. Uh, height to, height to normal. You can, you can then plug in and get your your normal map out of that, right? The other nice thing is dragging in these references. The only reason this is exposed is because I have an output. So if you look at the very end or when you make a substance, you get uh, a bunch of output nodes which have uh, name identifiers. Uh, and those identifiers are... <laughs> you saw a guy with Nick Cage streaming behind him? Oh, dude, that's... <laughs> I green screen this and just have me like riding in a car with Nick Cage at all times. So identifier wise, uh, this can be whatever you want it to be. 
you can tell it that you want this output is called like the cheese map for whatever reason. Um, but you can identify like this is this is a good way to figure out what the identifier and the label will be. Uh, if you click add here for usage, you can see this is like the, the default list that they, they have uh, within substance. So if say, say you have height, you can just highlight that. You can kill that if you want. Um, you just put height in the label and in the identifier. And now it knows that it's a height map. And anything, even though this isn't a height map, of course, if I plug that in, if I reference, uh, right now I'm in the generator testing ground. And you see there's the outputs down here. If I have a new substance, I can drag this into a scene and this output will be exposed to me, similar to how this one is. So that's how that's exposed. So if you right click these, you can open a reference and that's when you see, I'm gonna delete these ones now. That's when you see like how I'm making uh, this rock generator. And looking at some tutorials, I actually found it was quite interesting is to uh, get all of your like expanded detail of gradients and, and shapes into a, a way where you can expose uh, properties to help you change the shape of it. And then uh, overlapping on top of it with a blend, blend multiply and using a shape to cut out, it's like removing, right? Uh, all the excess around it and that way you can take this you can take this polygon shape for example or where are we at here the polygon shape and see I can change how many edges or how many sides the polygon has and it's expanded outside of the range to the point where uh, this this um, shape the circle shape or para paraboloid paraboloid hey thanks for the follow uh, Soro um, is cutting out that that shape so we'll put this back and make sure this is at five uh, and then I'm using a directional warp and plugging it into itself and then having it warp the shape inside of its inside of itself like you could if I do a noise just to show you what the thing's doing it's pretty intense. Um, let's see here. So as I continue, as, as I warp it for further, it's using this image, black and white, to choose how much to warp. What's up? What's up, man? So by doing it to itself, it's warping inside of itself, but it's not really going outside of the, the shape. Let's do that. So we. Back to the back to where it was at, and then I'm doing a slope slope blur with a Perlin noise. I'm always using the zoom now, just because like so you can see it's blurring a bit here, but with the zoom I can actually change the size of the Perlin noise. So it's like I almost always use this one now, as long as uh, as long as I guess it's not too expensive. The downside is that every time I need a different size, maybe I'll grab this, uh, duplicate it, when maybe you can just like use this Perlin or this Perlin. See, this one's really close and this one's really far, which means you could just reference it infinitely. Just paying for the calculation once. Um, yeah, so making that shape, and then I'm using levels to crunch it down. Um, and then I'm, like I was saying earlier, bringing it into an output height. Uh, and then that, when I go back into my thing, there's the output. The other thing that's really cool is when you're looking at referenced, uh, referenced generators or referenced substances inside of other substances, uh, they open up like tabs here. So it's pretty easy to go back and forth between them. Uh, the other thing that I've done, and I think I need to clean it up because there's some stuff that is not needed. Let me see. Yeah, like that. That's not changing anything. This rotation thing is not changing anything. Is this curve changing anything? 
Now this looks like all old residual information. So I guess we'll let's get into what what it means to like you're seeing I'm moving all these dials here. These are instance parameters. Those are parameters that happen in here, but I've how to explain this best. So here's the here's the generator. These parameters are are exposed. If you go into the generator and you start looking around, and you're like, oh man, I, I really like uh Let's see here. Like, where is that one that I really warp? So the directional warp. What's up, Raz? How you doing? The directional warp. We've got the intensity of the warp, right? But then we have this thing that says warp angle. Um, that and that warp angle, you can see it's not it's not there anymore. Uh, let me clear it. So the warp angle changes the direction like if you look in this one it changes the direction at which the warp is going to occur like which direction the warp will happen so what I've done is you click this click the little uh, drop down here and expose it and then I just call it warp warp angle right and you can type in whatever you want in here if you want to name it something else you hit OK, and now you don't have this exposed. What's up, Justin? Uh, you could you could post them in here, Emil. Uh, I'll probably get to it after I explain how this generator is working and what I'm doing with it with the splatter node. Uh, and then I think we'll just be talking about substance, get, getting questions out of the way, all that stuff while I'm building the other maps. So you can see now I have no control over the warp angle. Uh, and it's because it's exposed. So if you double click in your background, you can see all of your input parameters that are exposed. So I believe I am not using any of these because these are all from like prior exposed parameters that I have now deleted. Uh, so they'll just sit here residually. So when you go back here, you look and there's all these things, all these things don't do anything. So let's go ahead and clean that up real fast here. So I'll double click the background. It's kind of like viewing your canvas settings. Oh, you saw the article? Dude, awesome. I'm, I'm like excited and nervous about that whole thing. What's up, Kyle? Uh, so all these are exposed. We don't need any of these really, except for the warp angle. And see in here, you can also rename them. And it'll, it'll give you an underscore automatically. You make sure. Yeah, so see, now I just have the warp angle exposed and it's it's titled correctly. So we'll go in here and let's, um, let's actually, let's expose the pattern. Uh, we'll call it, we'll call it shape or base, base shape. So be a good example for like what's happening here. So see now the patterns collapse and you can't see it. If you go back into here, you have a pattern. And I think if you want to arrange these, you should be able to. Yeah, so I can put the, I want the base shape to be at the top. Uh, the polygon. Maybe I want to expose the amount of sides. So let's expose that. We'll just say poly sides. Okay, okay. So now the sides are exposed. Uh, double click background. Poly sides. Let's, let's do base shape, poly sides. So I'm putting this in the order in which I uh, would think about using the, like, oh, maybe I want to choose my shape first, and then I'll choose how many poly, uh, polygonal sides, and then I will choose the warp angle. Um, we have the slope blur and this guy, let's see. So you can blur pretty intensely. Like just because a bar is uh, full does not mean that that's the max. Sometimes they'll go further and you just double click and just type in whatever you want. Um, but let's start with what we had it at. So we got it at 16, I think. 
we're going to expose this and call it the, uh, we'll just call it uh, slope, slope blur intensity. Say okay to that. We'll click the background. Yeah, we'll probably do that after the warp angle. Uh, okay, and then you have your output for your height. Control, Control Shift S. We'll just save anything that's going on. Uh, thanks, Curious. Means a lot, dude. So, now we've got all those parameters exposed. We've got them in the right order that we want. You can also see that you've got your output images that are, are here as well. Uh, we go back here, and then we have this guy. So with those parameters exposed, I should be able to choose a shape, but maybe I want to use a square. How many sides to the, the, the poly I want. You can see how many unique rocks we might be able to get out of this. Right now I'm really liking this this shape and then warp angle check that out look at that madness so I could do that and then maybe I'm like oh I wonder what I wonder what the square looks like with that and maybe maybe less sides maybe more let's try a pyramid change the warp angle so many shapes you can create off of this right and then maybe I'm like, oh, let's let's try let's try a crazier slope blur. Like we'll just turn this. We'll maybe we'll make this uh, a bell. And then the polygon size. Maybe we'll keep that low. We'll change the warp angle to that. And then we'll slope blur. Look now, maybe I have a twig. Maybe that's what's going on here. You're like cool. So the other cool thing is now I can duplicate it, and I've got two, right? And then I can just take this one and make this whatever I want it to be. That looks good. We'll dupl duplicate that one. I'm sure there's a way to set this up so that I can be outputting a different height map every time I pull. It's got to be a way. What's up, salty? All right, so uh, before I go further with this, let me look at chat here. Uh, Dream, Dream Sai, uh, you might not have the most up-to-date moto because the, uh, the auto retopo and edges to curves came in in the very, very most recent one. So if you're missing that, that would be that'd be why. Oh, let's see here. What else we got going on in chat here? Uh do, 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 do. Amelia, you could ask your questions now too if you want. It was there, then it disappeared. Oh man, I have no idea. Maybe try resetting your uh, your moto. Let me let me make another piece while we're while I'm waiting on you guys. Awesome. So I've got these three pieces. So I'm going to use a splatter, splatter node. And uh, splatter nodes are pretty cool. They've got all these, these ways of controlling a ton of shapes. So if I like plug these in, you can see I have those shapes just realized in like a crazy like grid gridded pattern. Uh, so you can turn the grid number up. 
you can change the size of the shape. So you can do that. Uh, let's see here. We can do, we can rotate them. But this is where, no greeting, how rude. Reads, get out of here with that. <laughs> What's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, what, so one of the coolest things in here is when you start adding in a bunch of random information. It's like rotation variation. If you go the full like 360, you have everything going from from zero to 360. Greets, greets art, greets. Uh, I wouldn't suggest using zoom because like if you click in this canvas here and you hit spacebar, you'll see that. Uh, where it's zooming in, that edge, you lose tiling essentially once you start zooming in. Um, I got forgot, okay, geez. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's kill the tiling on that. Uh, then turn some disorder up, which starts changing like their offsets. It's pretty cool. Some disorder angle, maybe we want to have that disorder happen at like a, say like a 45. Um, disorder random, so this would become mute if you click that. So then it just scatters them all over the place. Size variation, so you can turn that up. I usually suggest uh, not going too high with this. Uh, just because you want that variation to probably happen with different shapes. Uh, at the very bottom, there's a luminance variation. So if I zoom in here and I turn this up, you can see that some of them go back, go back into space, which can be with a certain level of, uh, with a certain amount of it, I think it's really good. But uh, I wouldn't make that range too broad, mainly because. Um, if you make it really broad, when you start moving it with a histogram range, when you start moving it uh, forward and backwards in your in your z depth, you're going to lose most of them. So you kind of want it to be on the same plane, anyways. So let's go ahead and let's splatter this one and this one. So these are too big. Turn these down. Oh, I see, I see Emil's got some questions. Okay, so. Um, that, so that's an interesting question. Um, when it comes to stuff like that, uh, really tiling materials, if you have a really large space like that, you can use a combination of, like what I would suggest is using a combination of decals and props and putting those all over, uh, using blend materials and blending between multiple tileable stuff, multiple tileable materials to get your tiling to go away. That's how I would approach it. That, and like like I was saying in the article, that's one of those things that uh, can get complicated really fast if you want it to. Or you can just make three different tileables of the same type of material and then blend them together. And in that case, then you'd want to like vertex paint with mask like Sorato saying. Um, and just blend between three different types of materials. Like you have your road, maybe where it's tiling, maybe you could uh, vertex paint in puddles so that you, you break up the tiling with puddles and then props as well on top of it. I wouldn't worry too much about trying to solve it in the material itself. Cause that's, that's like a whole bunch of uh, pain. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of pain for not, not too much reason. But yeah, there's a, there's a ton of solutions. There's tons of stuff you can do. Um, okay. So now we're gonna, we're gonna blend these guys together. Let's do this one. I actually don't need that many. Uh, 
Or no, I do. Okay, so this one, this one, we'll just do a max lighten. Oh yeah, and you can see they're, they're both seated on top of each other right now. So you just have to go up to the top here and just hit random. Drag your random bar around, you can move them. So now, now you see we've got some, some interesting stuff going on. Keep this one active. We'll shrink these ones down. It's the size of this one. This one will shrink down too. And I also don't like the shape that it's giving. So we'll just rotate this. Look at that. Oh, so cool. Give it more size. Maybe we'll use a square. Whoa. Then we'll go here. Let's let's change the. We'll do that. Blend this one into here. Blend this one into here. Like this max. Again. Oh yeah, we gotta randomize this one. Get these even smaller. Maybe we'll add way more. Oops. It's the end result here. All right, cool. And then if we do like a normal or height to normal. Plug that in, and you get you get your dope, 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 dope hype type to normal, hype hype. Yeah, hopefully that answered your 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 uh, your question, Emil. I mean, I don't think it it doesn't need to be complicated, right? I think you can approach it in a pretty simple way. Um, actually, I want to do that, and then I'm going to add noise. What am I using noise-wise down here? Is it this one? Yeah. Okay, we're going to move this way over here. So, so we're making sense of what's happening. So now we're going to blend this. We're going to say that this is the dirt, right? And then these are these are all the little rocks and stuff that are getting blended onto the top. And then we'll plug that into the, the height. Height to normal. Looks pretty crazy. Don't worry about that yet. You can lower the strength of that as well. Uh, right click and drag onto the mesh will give you the normal for it. Um, let's actually do a base. I'm going to do a base material. I'm going to just use this as like a baseline. Oh shit, I just pressed. <laughs> no! Uh, there we go. So if you press 2, like you'll see that this is just a single output. If you press 2, going between 2 and 3, you're essentially expanding out your your outputs you can see here it's like standard material compact material so this is standard view and then compact so we're just gonna right click drag that up there and then we'll drag the normal up there so we got this normal map here pretty crazy on the roughness so we'll just click on the base material we'll go into the roughness value and we'll turn it up to white not all the way white but just white enough so that it's not like chaos to the eyes we're also going to lower the resolution of everything down to a 1024 just for performance reasons. Let's turn up the height a bit. So that's looking good. So you remember too that this uh, the final result is your height map, right? And it goes height to normal. So you can hold down the right click, drag up here, and then tell it that is the where are we at here height map. You're like holy fuck, that's crazy. Uh, Every once in a while, you're gonna have to go up here based on like how much your material is tiling, and just reel in your your height information. 
what I would suggest doing is because uh, because you're working in zero to one in a height map, like this, your height map is black to white, right? Zero to one. So in your height map, I would actually suggest, uh, or in the, the material displacement, is to keep the scale at one and then start reeling these values in to meet the correct height, if that, if that makes sense. So like, it's like, see how that, see how these are really spiky? Like for the, uh, for the soil, that means that the range in this is, it's too damn high. The range is too damn high. So this is where Ben's, Ben's magic that he showed me a while back, the histogram range node, which we'll actually end up putting in front of all these so that we can control where they're at in, in Z depth space. Dude, that that's what's so cool about uh, uh, <laughs> Hey Kyle, <laughs> what is this? Uh, so that's what's so cool about this program is just like trying stuff and throwing things together. You get really cool results. Uh, also, if you're seeing these weird little jaggies, uh, usually means your tessellation is pretty low. This is like the tessellation you'll usually see in games. Look at that, mm, delicious. Uh, we'll turn that up a little bit, maybe like 20. Stupid res. Okay, so histogram range. Let's bring up this bar. So actually, we've talked about all this stuff at random occasions on the stream. So this is going to be a good video because I'm going to try and condense all of it into at least one video. Tobias, what's up, man? What is up? So right now you can see we've got the full, this full range sitting in the midpoint. Uh, by default, it's it's going zero to one on this, with barely almost no uh, white full white value. So histogram range allows you to condense the the range, and then using the position, shift that that range that's condensed to the side. So like maybe you want it to be pretty low, low in the range. So we'll do that and then we'll we'll continue to condense it down. So now now we're looking at our which is fine. I mean we can move all this is another nice thing about substances, we can move all this stuff around later. You're watching my stream in VR? Dude, that's that's crazy. So now, now we've reeled the ground in some, you can see. Uh, and now we're getting these crazy spikes and our rocks are really tall. So let's actually, uh, let's go in and before, let's see here, before they blend together, let's actually do a histogram range for each one of these. So we'll just do this. Oops. You can see it's already a bit more reeled in. Let's uh we'll initially start with the full range and we'll just try and bring the position down. So like Alright, that looks that looks pretty good. The reason we've lost the soil as well, or the dirt, is because this white range is brighter than this range. Or this white range, this gray range here in the histogram is above this. So when it generates the normal, it's, it's generating above it. Beware of nausea. I wonder how, in VR, like how big is the screen? Can I like, how do I, how do, I do this? Does this work? If I turn, the, turn this off and Nope, it's not working. Screw it. I was gonna make myself huge for the screen, but we need to stay focused. We need to stay focused. Okay, so this range is higher than this range, so we need to lower that, right? So let's give it the full range first, and then we'll lower these guys down till they look like they're not crazy in the uh, texture, or in the uh, displacement. And then we need to do the same thing with these guys. He fucked up, he fucked up. Uh, 
So these guys are actually pretty small, which might be okay, might not be. So let's try maybe, let's turn those up a bit. Maybe we'll lower the pattern down one or the grid number. That's a little bit better. <laughs> Kyle, that's amazing. That's, uh, what? <laughs> so like these, these look pretty good. And then it's just, you know, it, it goes down to taste like, so these guys, they're pretty high up there. Maybe, maybe they should be a little shorter. So you can just push them down. The other thing is bringing in some other shapes. What am I using over here? Perlin noise, no. No, 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 no. Is it this one? Like where did I where did I blend details? I think it was Is it clouds? No, that, that just goes to nowhere land. It's this guy probably, which is coming from this one. Instagram blending clouds, what is this? Aha! All right. So it is just the same one. So let's uh, we'll do a blur high quality grayscale. We'll turn the the quality all the way up. Blur it out a bit. Uh, we'll blend. Actually, I think I need a different. Let's try it. Let's try this one. Instagram range. So like what Ben taught me, and now I do it religiously, it's at the end of every like major feature, I put the histogram range, maybe auto auto levels to get it the full range, and then histogram range so that I, now I can freely move that stuff around. So blend. that in here okay so now we're getting more of this like fluffy I wonder if I need to invert this yeah kind of getting a fluffy soily look like slighten Multiply. Let's see if this is gonna. I don't want to go too crazy with that. And then we're blending into that. We need to go into this histogram and raise the range and then the position. Actually, might not need. No, I'm going to control that anyways. So we have the full range. So at the end, then I can move it up and down, which is super nice. Super. Let's see what other blends do. In this one, you see they're capping out, and that's because it's it's meet, meeting the uh, full range on the uh, histogram. So it's like it can't go any higher. So we need to, you just need to push it down. So simple. So and if you want, if you want the full depth range, and you just want to, uh, let's see here. Let's look at this. So now we have all this space in the front, and all the all the rocks and stuff are down below. And I liked where those were at. We'll just, for the sake of speed, we'll just, um, we'll histogram range the entire set of the rocks. 
afterwards. So then I should be able to lift them like that. And then wherever I wherever I see issues, like these guys, what are these? The little the little long stick like guys, these guys are still really really tall. There we go. To the metallic all the way down. We don't want any metallic. Do that. Okay, so I guess now that uh, now that I've gone through all that jazz, uh, is it, do you guys have any other? Do you have any questions pertaining to this stuff? And then after that, we'll just move forward and start. Um, we'll start separating out the details um, for the other one, which is this guy. Man, it's crazy as you like once you've solved it in your head the first time like this this took me like i don't know two hours to like get where i could tune it nicely and stuff where's my ref there's no ref i'm just showing you this these things uh i actually don't have the ref of the thing that we uh this this thing but you should always have ref uh let me see if i can find my Because I'm loosely ba basing off uh, the cobble that I find it all over Malmo. So this one's pretty dirt filled, so don't worry about that. So like this color variation, I would really like to get that but uh, right now I'm just kind of exploring uh, just what what I can like oh how would I make this thing here how would I make this stuff or this sand or like that that's a little piece of string adding stuff like that to your texture as long as you don't make it look too tiley is pretty that's pretty cool and don't ask me how I found how I was able to take a picture of the ground without getting a little snooze packet in the, <laughs> in the picture. I didn't Photoshop them out either, man. God, there's so many of those. Is that? No, that's a leaf. I was like, is that a snooze pack? A little snooze? Malmo? Malmo? I don't, is that, is that how? Malmo? Malmo. All right, little education, little education time. You like that, Reeds? Snooze big in Sweden, dude. It's the only way to fly, apparently. Snooze is about about as big as jerky in the U.S. All right, here's here's Malmo. Say like an American Malmo, and then I'm I'm from over here. Oh yeah, here I grew up here, and then I went I went down this thing called the I ninety. Went through this mountain pass, felt like I was going to Mordor. Landed in Seattle, landed landed in a car, uh, and then went to school here. Did some work here, and then flew over to here, which is Melo. Ah, it's fine. Simp simp, it's fine. My Swedish is the best. <laughs> Tech, text me, kid. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so since you guys uh, Merlin the wizard did a wizard just follow me? Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, 
Oh my god. Dude, that's awesome. Thanks for the follow. Let's see here. Okay, so we're not gonna Well, I guess we could since we're since we went through this one, let's just keep going with it. I sure did. <laughs> it's like I'm blushing. <laughs> A wizard. I gotta do some streaming talking Swedish, dude. I'm completely fucking horseshit at Swedish. I think it's a cool language just because it's just so different sounding. People are like, ah, oh, no, what? No. No, I couldn't. I bring. Uh, I could bring Robin on here sometime, and you can. You can show me. All right, so let's. So, in the importance of making substances, I would say the best thing to do is height map. Get your height map good. Get good at that height map. Then. Uh, get it in your viewport like this get like a basic roughness value which is just gonna be like a, a gray somewhere like high gray just so you can see the shapes the grammar is very easy that's why you get that's why you get a uh, swinglish man they're just converting Swedish straight into English So, get your height map, get your normal map, get your height map and your normal map and a base color roughness into the viewport. Displace it so you can start seeing your shapes. Get it exactly where you want it. So like, for example, these guys are too tall. So let's, let's go in and let's, let's lower that, which I think is these ones. I like the height of them. Maybe I'll just lower the range so that they, oh shit, I can't do that. Actually, maybe I can do a histogram range on this part, turn that up, then lower them beforehand, then bring them back through here, and then raise the, that doesn't work. Uh, well, let's say that this is, this is looking pretty good. This, those rocks, I'm going to have to lower them. Did I put any luminance variation so we'll lower the luminance variation that way they're not too oh wow I can add gain to the okay um, if I want those to come through I'm gonna need to just lower the soil like so the other thing is I need to make sure that these guys are at full range whoop nope not that one I need to raise this so I don't have what like what is this we're just gonna have to shift everything up a bit because we're too close to the uh, the the base of the of range so like you're getting all these areas that are flattening out raise that up and then we're gonna have to go in here wait why is that oops gonna tune some of these a pebble generator oh my yeah put 
I can hate these little guys. I'm gonna make them bigger. They're just not they're just not doing it for me. Anyway, okay, so let's say this is good. We're fu we're happy with this. This looks awesome. Uh, the next part is getting your roughness in line. So we got a normal that's working. That's cool. I think I'm gonna lower the. Whoa. Hang on, I want to see if I can. There we go. All this tuning. This is this is a substance, man. Tune, tune, tune. Okay, so we'll call this good. We're good to go with this one. So we got our normal map, that's looking pretty hot. We got our height map, that's cool. Now we need to start separating out material types. So we've got our soil, and then we've got our rocks. Uh, we'll just put all of the rocks, including that weird like stick looking one. We'll put them all inside the same, the same range. And right now, what I'm using mostly to separate them out is the histogram scan. There might be a better way to do it. There's info coming through like fucking crazy with this guy. I really don't like that one. I think, I wonder if it's the sides. helps get so picky with this stuff man all right fine that's fine <laughs> no more okay so histogram scan basically you're giving it a position to look at in the height map and uh, and then you're increasing your contrast essentially make masks from height maps so I basically I've created a mask for where these all those rocks and pieces are so to keep it simple this is the this is the base material uh, if we go down I'll shrink some of the stuff so you can see it we're gonna turn on roughness to be exposed as an input and then uh, I'm going to do a blend between an index or a uniform color, two uniform colors. I'll just do this. I'll just flip those. And we'll start, they'll both be grayscale. We'll start with white, full roughness. So they're not really reflective at all, right? We'll plug this in. So you can see now, now our material is about as rough as anything in like known non-man-made materials will ever get. Uh, and then we'll use this 
as a mask. I'll double click this so you can see. So here's the roughness. And I don't know, let me see which one this is. Okay, so what you're seeing is this mask is basically masking between these two colors. This is the background and the foreground. This is the end result here. You can see it's not matching currently, but we'll we'll get that in a minute here. So these are right now these are flipped, so I'm gonna invert those. So we want the rocks, we're gonna make the rocks more reflective. Or less rough. Um, so we'll we'll put the dirt somewhere around here. We'll put the rocks somewhere around. We'll we'll put it there for now. So then you can see the mask is not really it's not really lining up all that well. So we just need to go back into this one and start moving the position around to shrink shrink where that's happening. Technically this should work. You're gonna get I'm getting some scenarios like this. Which means that uh, the soil is blocking that height maps location. I'm sure there's a better way to do this as well, because it breaks here a little bit as also. If I take this and lower the position, then they get exposed, which allows me to see more. Oh, you know what I need to be doing? Uh, this histogram range needs to be going off of this one. Uh, mainly because, well, that shouldn't change much. Yeah, that's not really doing too much for me. Okay, anyway, so we're separating out these two materials. Um, I'm gonna, maybe I'll lower the contrast on this and then. Tighten up those graphics on level three. All right, so we're getting these, these two ranges separated, which is good. So this is like the basic of basic high maps. We can start getting into some crazier things like uh, breaking up the surfaces more. Like maybe I want um, maybe I want to blend this this noise with the histogram range. Uh, we'll do this here and uh, because. What is it? The lighter one's the soil. We're going to replace this with this. Actually, don't think we need to blend. Let's do that. And then, so that's the range of the soil now. Like, if I look at the. Let's see here. Do that. So now, now if you look at the roughness, we've got all types of stuff happening in here. And then using the histogram range, we should be able to shift this stuff around. Maybe we want less range, but we still want uh, a little bit of stuff happening in there. Man, that this is like brutal. We're gonna bring that in, reel that in even more. Okay, so cool. <laughs> I 
<laughs> the porridge comment. Are you Danish? So we won't do linear dodge, we'll do Actually, what would you want to do in this not overlay? Max Lighten, I guess. So you can see I'm, I'm controlling the roughness of the rocks currently. Oh, the other thing that is really going to help uh, make stuff pop is ambient occlusion. So using the new one, the HBAO, which requires your height map. Here's your height map again, right? Plug that into here. Look at, look at how nice that is. Mm. Radius. Do something pretty light, but broad. There we go. Mmm, yummy AO. Delicious. Just hold down your right click, drag it up here, and it already knows that that's AO, so it should just plug it in. Let me just turn this up, you can see a bit more. Delicious. Ah, uh, nice. Oh, he's from the south. To be as you can just tell them to shut their wildling mouths. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they'll love that, I'm sure. It's like, I can't. My body's like, that That felt racist somehow. I don't, why did that feel like that? So we'll keep that, we'll keep the AO pretty subtle. Uh, <laughs> you like that? Uh, okay, so we've got our normal now, we've got an AO and we've got our, uh, our base materials which is giving us our roughness and a base color which right now, because it's set to false, uh, is gonna be up here. And it's just a, a mid gray, a 126 gray. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, so now we have all that stuff. Uh, and we're, I'm looking at it, and this is kind of when you start to go, this is when I usually go back and forth a bit. Uh, I'm noticing that the, the rocks look really smooth. Like maybe, maybe some of these should get really big. Let me see which ones I got here. Pattern, let's, let's lower the grid size. Do that. Splatter, Instagram range. Like, why is that topping out? Like, see the top of it? Let's see if giving it a luminance, there we go, shifting the luminance value. Uh, pattern size, we'll shrink them just a little bit. And we'll bring them up. This is nice. Now we're getting some variety. See, what's really cool is like you're seeing the the mask update as well. It's like magic. We'll soften that edge so there's a bit of a transition. But again, now, now this is really emphasizing the fact that this is like super strange looking. Like what is happening? So we can do a number of things. We can do a see if we can find a good good noise for it. What was I using over here? Don't forget to save. So while I'm not going to use this specific material, the reason that I'm diving so much into Substance right now is because I'm getting ready 
to start pushing uh, the larger base materials for everything, and then really start polishing up uh, some of the some of the earlier earlier materials like the moss and and the stone to just get it that much nicer. Uh, but yeah, and the other reason is because the tree is mainly going to be dealt with with substance materials and then blending between masks. So I need to get better at substance in order to move forward. Uh, so let's find that noise that I'm using. I think it's on these guys. I think it's this. So I'm just gonna grab that and bring it over here. I'll explain to you what, what we just grabbed. Oh, what's this directional warp that it's going off of? Oh, okay, I see. I see. So we're just gonna delete that. So what I've grabbed here is this this map here, which is a uh, what is this one? The Grunge map, 007. It's the James Bond Grunge map. I've transformed it in in 2D node with the uh, 2D node and just divided it by two, which doubles the resolution or tiles it twice within the same space. Um, then I'm histogram ranging it so the range is getting very narrow you probably can't see it much in there inverted it and then uh, blurred it a bit so that it's not too sharp we'll actually uh, lower this to nothing for now just so we can see it um, before this happens we blend before the blend occurs between the soil and the rock, we want to take care of the rock, the little rocks. So now I'm blending that noise on top of this this guy. So let's see what we can get here. The hope is we do a multiply. I think, and we hope that we get little details like maybe it's not even visible yet so let's just plug it in and see what it looks like to do that oh yeah and you can see okay cool good it's good let's turn this res up it's calculating there we go okay so now we're getting a little bit more stuff happening let's uh let's divide this again see if we can't get more yes yes Let's try more range. So remember too that this stuff is actually going to, because it's it's a multiply, it's going to be pushing all of your, your stones down. So you need to be really careful with either how strong you're doing that, or like while you're doing that, you need to be raising the position of everything uh, stone-wise. But yeah, see now you're getting stuff like this, which is cool. Uh, maybe needs to be reeled in a bit and that's why I was blurring it by like 0 0.0 or 0.1 it's like just a little bit of blurring and the transform too if you're seeing that it's tiling a little too much you can just like angle rotate you can move you can search for different noises too how cool is that how cool is that So now, now the rocks are looking uh, much more like the rocks you expect. Like they're pitted, they've got little little holes and stuff in them. The soil is actually looking a little too, it's like maybe it's not sandy enough. Like in my head, because of the way these rocks are shaped, I'm maybe expecting a bit more of a sanded look. Mm. Let's see here. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to try that I haven't really so you know we made this mask. We're getting we're getting derailed a bit, but it's okay. It's all about experimenting. So we're gonna take this mask and we blur it, right? We blur it, blur it pretty good. Uh, this is the point at which this is when the two materials come together. So maybe we should put a little marker here. This is when the baby is made. So. This, these shapes, when you think about it, 
when you blur it, it kind of represents the location at which the sand, or where the rocks are displacing the sand a bit. Because, you know, when a, when a rock's there, the sand kind of will lift up around it, depending on, like, what's happening to the, the sand at the time. Uh, so, I think we might be able to blend these on top of each other. Max lighten. And this is going to have to be reeled in a bit as well. So not only that, we're also going to have to, uh, <laughs> this is going to get weird. Okay. So I'm going to bring this all down here. So this is all soil stuff happening. So what we want to do is I want to bring in a bit of displacement into the sand or dirt that's happening around where the rocks are. But I also don't want to displace it to the point where they're on top of the rock. So at first, let's see, let's let's get this plugged in and we'll see what's happening. Like I'm I'm fully expecting something to happen and nothing happened. What what is going on here? Okay, so that's the inverse of it. So that's that's it happening, but on a very extreme, on a very extreme scale. Uh, so now let's lower this position. Honestly, have no idea if this can even. I need to also give room for this to happen in the soil, uh, in the histogram. Nice and descriptive labels. <laughs> Only for you, wizard. <laughs> Only for you. So if I lower the soil. put it somewhere around let's let's just do 2.5 and then we use this oh no that's that's wrong here this one Green, I think, is doing it. Yeah, so then we lower the blur. Turn the quality up too. We lower the blur. It should be happening. Yeah, you can see if I really lower the blur, you can see this is the range. Whoa, this is a crazy looking material right now. What's up, seller? How you doing? Lurking super hard, huh? Um, so without blurring it, you can see this is the range at which uh, the soil is lifting. Um, as I blur it, that should get diffused quite a bit. Don't want it to get diffused too much. And then we also don't want to overtake the rocks too much. And it's such a subtle, I think it's such a subtle push in detail but man the things it does for the reality of what's happening uh, I'm gonna lift everything up again just a bit there and then we're probably going to need to update this mask There we 
go. Starting to look like chocolate chip. Mmm. Delicious. So see all this stuff set up and I'm like, oh man, maybe we should add just a little bit more. Maybe we'll do another blend in a 2D transform of this guy combined with itself. And we'll just take this 2D one and we'll rotate it by 45 degrees. We'll just offset it a little bit. And then plug that back into this one. Whoa. A quick cookie texture, you will get no such thing. How you doing, Jeremiah? Work, work, work. Uh, we're doing good. Just chilling. Living, living the dream. Okay. Uh, these are. These look weird now. That's not that one. Is it this one? Uh, here's the song I always skip. So sorry. The dream was a lie. Everything is on fire. Help. <laughs> it's okay, man. Okay, so we got all of our, our doodads. concentrate in this area okay so now that we got this going on let's look at uh, maybe pushing the roughness a bit further also Bible thumb
the hell is going on here? Overlay? There we go. Curvature maps, yes. That's a that is a really good idea, actually. So if you hit spacebar, type in curvature, and uh, you need to input a normal. Actually, the other way around. So curvature, you can see this stuff going on. Get some really nice variation going on. See what happens if I do this. Man, there's almost no, like where's all the information? In this area? Oh man, okay. Do a curvature, maybe uh, levels on it. Let's do this. Oh yeah, see, I get this problem. Hmm. It's like I feel like I need to actually uh, Substance Painter 2.5. Let's get this roughness out of the way and then we will take a quick look at that. Is there anything uh, huge? Hype, hype, hype. It was 8.30 as well. Uh, let me actually need to look at Discord off screen because Matthew O'Halloran crushes souls. Um, If you guys post anything in the Discord chat, in the work in progress, or whip-art. Color management and more. Awesome, full caps, full stop. What's up, BK Primal? How you doing? Mr. Dave, how's it going? What's going on? All right, so we're right now I'm trying to solve this problem. Essentially, the mask is not uh, supporting my needs. <laughs> Wait a minute, 2048, 1024. That's wrong. Why is that a 1024? What is going, wait, what? Is 
So because these are 1024, oh, that's bad. We need to make this one. There we go. Wow, now they're like super high risk. <laughs> now they look like little turrets. What is this? Substance player, nice. Still getting a weird discrepancy between these two. All right, I, I, I see what's happening here. Problem is, is if I shrink that, I basically lose all the other shapes. Some bowl hockey. Mm. There we go, more subtle. This looks like on the cube. Cool, I'm down. Logicrest, how you doing, man? Parallax occlusion and substance pattern two F five? That's pretty fucking hot, man. Not gonna lie. Logic Crest, how you doing, man? What's what's good? You're beautiful. <laughs> I mean <laughs> So this is not working out for us. What about this guy? Uh, okay. Cool. We need to quit dabbling and just get into it. So let's uh, uh, primal. I actually can't answer that question, but I can tell you that everyone is learning it. It's important, man. Even if we're not using it or if we are using it, either way, it is important that you learn this tool. Uh, not, not trying to get into the industry. It would be nice to see some materials like maybe like this showing that you're at least playing with it. But this is, I mean, I don't know. This isn't really, this is really good for production on a large scale. Like uh, Rainbow Six used it a ton in their production. But as far as like to get your first job, if it's not a uh, texture, AK Bakes and Substance Painter, nice. If it's not a uh, texture artist position, then them putting uh, that you need to be a texture artist is a little like, I, what are they? If it's not a texture artist position, you shouldn't need to know this for the job. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's let's get in here. Let's get in some color. So we're, most of the color stuff that I really like to play with is uh, gradient maps, because they're magical. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and grab, let's grab the uh, baby, plug it into the gradient map. So we have that, whoa, what happened? That was really weird. Okay, so we've got our gradient here. Gradient map. We've taken the baby of the rocks and the soil. 
Uh, Nalt's pretty good. I had a bad case of it when I was streaming, but it's it's pretty nice. Uh, we're gonna make sure it's color, and then uh, see where it says gradient here. You got your your black to white range. That is this stuff here. If you hit gradient editor, this is freaking magical. The guy whoever came up with this at algorithmic is a genius. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take Morgan's. Uh, where is it at here? We're gonna take Morgan's brick material, Jazz Morgan. We're gonna just straight up rip off his his colors. <laughs> I heart you, Morgan. I heart you. So here are we at here. Oh, I can't tab to it with it. Okay, hang on. doing this it's gonna get weird okay up top Kobe pick color just gonna click and drag a little sample there we get all these color samples going on in here how fucking cool is that so this this could give you some some good basic colors like maybe I want to shift these around a bit and basically they're just mapping that position of the gradient uh, to whatever yeah, that looks cool. To whatever that position is in the grayscale that you've plugged into it. So then let's go to the base base material and make sure that we're all seeing this on the stream. Yeah. So we go to the base material. Let's expose the color, base color input. We'll just drag that into here. And you you're essentially you've got your first you got your first like base color pass if you want if you want to do it like this. This is actually really good for things like soil when you're trying to get that initial color breakup. I would not leave it at just this since I mean that's a little it's a little weird, gotta admit. Why not use the colors for my reference? Uh because the reference that I was looking at is for the is for this stuff over here this craziness um, but yes cookie texture it's getting closer it's getting closer opinion what, what color are these be these be pretty dark right maybe we just go into here grab this guy get more that close oh no oh, that doesn't work see that's another so the this is where the problem comes in with this type of workflow uh, it's it is only looking at the range the gray the grayscale range that you input into the the gradient map so you can't really isolate things you know so like this for example is at the same lowest point as the the other stuff so like this this here is the same as this height wise oh, grab this one lighten that up so you can kind of do it but it's not really it's good for some breakup, and I would suggest using this just because you get you get a lot of uh, color variation in your textures. Um, probably do a blend. Take that one. Maybe we'll maybe we'll single these guys out. Uh, Instagram scan. Grab that guy. Actually, we'll even 
or so. So now we got this. And then we'll do that. No, sorry. The problem with this, I need to look into this more because like the position and range, I'm getting a lot of bleed. It's happening and you would not eat that cookie. Ah, I wouldn't eat it either, man. It's starting to look a little sickly. I mean, you could go the color ID route. I think that you could do that. But like this is where this is where my limitation in uh, albedo generation starts to come come through. Like I'm not sure how you separate these out very well. Like I guess you like the interaction that's happening between these materials needs to be separated by colors. A forty seven. This is the part. Looks tasty as fuck. Mm. Like that. Mm. That's either me going like, oh, it's so delicious, or like a poorly, uh, poor representation of like uh, a raptor from Jurassic Park. If there's such a thing. Choco Rock. You can't fix this with the levels node? So, while I can fix with the levels node, the levels node, or the even the, uh, where is it at here? Even the histogram scan is not taking into account uh, where the soil has covered rocks, right? Can I scan like like if I scan this one, you can see like it's grabbing the, the soil as well. So while, while it is, uh, while it is isolating them, it can't fully isolate, you know? which is a problem. And this is the part I haven't actually looked into too closely yet. It's probably the next bit that I start looking into. I wonder if Kyle is in here. Kyle, are you still in here? I don't think he is. Oh, he is. I see him at the top. Three, Kyle. You lurking. I know you. You lurking. How do you go about separating out your uh, shapes? So we're looking at how you would, uh, 
isolate rocks from the mud for albedo purposes. Lurk. South stands. 303, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, it's an emoji. I think there's still emojis. On it, boss. Dude, sick. Stoked. So, how do you isolate objects that are on the same height plane as soil? Just watching the magic? Well, there's no magic here. It's all tricks. That was terrible. What was I thinking? Uh, let's see here. Because, like, you would think you would use a histogram scan. Right? And that would isolate the stones. But it doesn't take into account the stones that are uh, submerged in the soil. Like, it still sees those. Height blend, height blend. What is this madness? What is this thing? Height top, height bottom, mask optional. All right, let's look at this guy. So instead of this blend, we use this one. Baby number two, top, bottom. Ooh. Mm. Blended height. So what is? Uh, let's do gradient. I just want to see what that is. So how do you use that? There we go. Height offset. Ooh. Ooh. Is it, how new is this node? I don't remember this one. Then again, dude, there's so many nodes. You know, it's like shit. Height mask. Oh shit. Oh shit, dog. Okay, no, this is exactly what we needed. Boom. Okay, and then this one blended height. If I like get rid of this one and just double click this. Oh, that is nice. Okay. I didn't know of that. So if you have a node that's got multiple outputs, you can double click them to preview it. Huh. Thanks, Cal. Bottom height priority. Dang, dude, this is, yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. So, I mean, that, that makes it so you can, okay, let's see here. Damn, Kyle. Damn, Kyle. Let's, uh, we'll bring this over here. Plop. Now, this is all wrong. What are we looking at here? This one. No. Wait, what am I? So, okay, so this is just used for material separation then. Dang, that's awesome. So it's almost like material IDs. Oh, wait, it was always there. Fuck. 
like that, just shaking, <laughs> just uncontrollably shaking. You see, that's one of those nodes that I don't think would... Uh, 5.6 came out? Dude, awesome. Yeah, that seems like uh, the one they would be using to blend uh, multiple materials together, right? That are like the full full material. Uh, so we've got this one, which we need to change the color of this. This specific guy. To something more... Gray like that. And then I guess technically you don't even need some of these. Oh, I see what's going on here. This one could actually be no. That one actually needs to be the t the dirt. The other rocks like that. And this one is the blend of the two. Uh, the preset button in Moto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know the feels, man. Oh, I like that one. Moisture. Oops. Ooh, you guys are posting stuff now. Whoops, what am I doing here? Oh, I see what's happening. Meh. Shit, this needs to be color. Uh, This texturing is terrible. I'm gonna need to play around with this some in order to get it looking looking pretty nice.
Oh man, that's so awesome. So for cheap, cheap reasons, we can just do this and then lighten that up. So then we can see the the ranges, the ranges. Actually, probably HL, HSL or HSL. that for now and then just need to turn up that contrast to tighten up them edges interesting oh man dude that's cool yes substance equals sweet short sexy all right oh man you guys are posting an awful lot in there Uh, so for this, for this, what I'm doing right now, this is just eyeballing it. But if it was in a professional work environment and or like I was working on my own specific scene, you should, uh, there should be values. Like I'd color pack ship that. Uh, there, there are values to follow, right? For sure. And the more... The more you can uh, get those those values correct, the more your material is going to start looking like the real stuff. Following those values is super important. Anywho, yes, let's. Uh, I wonder if there's a way to. So this height blending thing, is there a difference between this one and this one? Blended height? I don't think there is. Huh. So is this actually make that one obsolete? Interesting. Yeah, so definitely like what, what Kyle is saying, if you wanna check values, there's so much free scanned information out there now that you can just eye drop those values. And you can get some pretty, pretty close in, uh, values. Get that information. And also, there's no shame. There's no shame in... Uh, so you see how I'm making all these these materials, maybe I will make a generator that generates different types of stone of a specific look. And maybe the, all the little extra normal details that are on the stone here, maybe those come bundled in with it. So then all I need to do is plug all that in. How long have I been using designer for? Oh dude, maybe like, so I got it when it first came out, uh, but my understanding of it has not come as far as it is right now until recently, like maybe within the last six months, six months to a year, I think I was when I started actually looking at it really closely. Uh, but I've always known that it was just because you're seeing real time updates and node based editing seems to be the thing to do. You just you get some nice some nice stuff. Like this one I've spent, I don't know, four hours on or something like that. If I drag this up here, 
that's my base color what is this one this is my AO and this is my normal so this is the one I'm working on right now I'm try and push myself a little bit further let me save all this we're getting to the point where we're about to do critiques for you guys you forgot it's Tuesday oh my god I didn't forget Tuesdays Tuesdays are the, the day after Monday and then uh, Tuesdays are there to remind you you still have uh, you know three more days <laughs> that's all uh, so yeah there's there's some more variety that needs to happen in here but uh, I really like where this is going this material Let me turn it up a bit and you can see like how crazy the angles on these stones get So leaving it in the one range, I think is like pretty good because it gives me the height variation that I'm looking for. And if you look at my, uh, where are we at here? So here's my AO, right? That doesn't take, like I don't author that. That's just the node doing its work. Uh, the base color currently is just some colors, some grays, some different ranges of gray and then a curvature blended on top of it and then my uh, this is my roughness so my roughness map I'm actually using a directional warp to warp this so this pattern tiled twice and then uh, histogram range to keep it within a clamped value range and then uh, the directional warp I'm using to offset the stones by a certain amount, which doesn't look like right now I have anything plugged into it. I wonder. Let's do this. Let's plug this guy in here and see what happens. Directional warp, intensity. So you can see everything starting to shift. Uh, usually when you wanna get your stones to have value differences in each each image. Uh, race piece, if that's a if that's stuff that you want critiques on, uh, drop it in the work in progress area on the Discord. Um, so I usually take this value and bring it up to like a, a thousand. See, and then and then you start getting crazy shit like this and then you can you can reel it in but I like I like what it's doing it's doing crazy shit which is always cool it's the thing you did your first okay hang on here Whoa. That looks intense, man. I don't even I don't even know. It's cool though. Looks crazy. It's like space alien maggots. Anywho, all right, let's uh, let's look at your guys' stuff. I'm going to get some things set up. So give me a give me a minute here. We can actually uh, Two seconds, guys. 